Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com and today I want to show you how to uh, install a sump pit in your basement. So uh, maybe you've got a bit of a high water table or you're having a problem with moisture in your basement and you've decided that you're going to put a sump pit in because you don't have one. Uh, basically, you know, that's what we want to show you today. This is the, the plastic pre-made pit that we're going to put in. So it's just a big plastic bucket basically with a lid that snaps on and then there's access here for your pump or your lines to come out. So this pit here is approximately, I think it's about two feet deep and it's about two feet across. So actually it may be close to 30 inches deep. So uh, obviously before we can install that we need to first of all decide where we want it, mark out the concrete, cut the concrete, jackhammer it out and dig the hole. So, so there's a fair bit of work involved before you can even worry about putting the pit in. Uh, in our case today we're actually relocating an existing spot so I've already done some of the cutting. The old sump pit was right here uh, which was going to end up being in the corner of a bed or a, of a room in the basement and they didn't want it there obviously so we're just moving it over here a little bit to the other side of the wall. In this case they've got, I'm not even sure if you can see it, but there is a weeping tile coming in under the footing into this sump pit so we need to connect another extension onto that and that'll come through a trench here and then cut into the side of the, the pail into this hole. Okay, and then the pump and everything will go in it. So, so this video is strictly on, you know, excavating this hole and getting that pit set and in the hole. So, so as I said, I did do some of the cutting already. So basically what I'm trying to do is cut, cut down about two inches or so. Just kind of a perimeter of the, of, uh, the area I want to excavate. Uh, this will just make a nice clean edge for when we re-concrete in the, the surface again. So we cut that, chip it out with a jackhammer. Uh, we had this smaller one here and uh, the concrete here is particularly hard so I think we're going to probably go to a bigger jackhammer just to speed things up a bit but uh, typically this hammer probably would do what you need it to do. Your first little chunk that you break out with a jackhammer is always tougher than then once you get that hole out there and there's room for the pieces to fall into, but uh, uh, we're, we are going to get a bigger one, I think, to finish the show, the video. So you can see I cut the perimeter. What I basically did, I'm using my, uh, using an old circular saw with a diamond concrete cutting bit in it. Uh, we're going to use a, a vacuum to help control some of the dust and a bit of water. Uh, obviously you need to be careful, we're mixing water with an electrical tool so you don't don't get too crazy dumping it all over the place and end up shocking yourself. Um, now the size of the opening here, like I said, this pit's about 24 inches across. I allowed about 30 inches just to give us a little more room to dig. We've got to dig fairly deep so you want, to, you want a little extra room to work. Uh, if you were cutting this concrete with a grinder, you could probably cut a round circle if you wanted to, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. But in this case I just cut it sort of rectangular, sort of squarish and uh, th that should do the trick. So uh, you're going to need uh, you know, eye protection, hearing protection for sure. Like I said, we're going to run a shop vac to try to control some of the dust. Uh, you may want a dust mask though as well. So we're just going to continue on just to finish off this little piece here that we haven't cut so far. And uh, it'll just take me one second to get the vacuum and a couple things into place and then we'll be ready to cut. So you can see uh, now when I plunged in with the saw back here to start the cut I already had it started so it looked like it just dropped in like nothing but it will take a little bit of work to get your first start to the uh, cut. Uh, you could see I think probably in the video how the vacuum does a good, pretty good job of controlling most of the dust. You still get some airborne, you know you can set a fan up in a window or something too to try to suck some of the, the extra out. Uh, and then just splashing a bit of water along here helps also again to settle the dust and uh, also cools the blade and, and assists in the cutting process a little bit as well. So, so we've got our cut all made. I'm going to uh, squeegee some of this excess water just off into the sump pit for now and uh, then we're going to get the bigger hammer and start chipping this out. Okay so we've uh, switched out for a little bigger, uh, little bigger um, jackhammer here. There is a one bigger than this yet that's still electric but I'm pretty sure this one will do it. 
Um, now you can see we've already started here. Basically, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown on how to use one of these in case you never have. Um, generally speaking, if you can start near an edge or a corner is usually better. And you know, if you're cutting like this, you want to start a couple inches away with the tip so that you don't damage this. And uh, the idea is want to try to get a, a hole broke out and, and cleaned out a little bit so that then when you start hammering back here, you know, you usually come back a couple inches from the edge and you know, right here I'd be putting the point and start and you're trying to break pieces off and now that this is emptied out, the pieces kind of have somewhere to go and it, it works a lot easier from this point once you have a bit of a hole started. Yeah, those are the main things. It's obviously going to be loud. Uh, you don't, for, for most jackhammers, the weight of the jackhammer really does the work. You know, leaning all your weight on it sometimes is actually uh, inhibiting it to work properly. You, you need a little bit of weight on it and you're going to need to pry on it a little bit sometimes, but for the most part, just let the, the hammer do its work. I'm going to have the uh, wet dry vac running and that'll suck up some of the dust. Uh, and also I'll be putting some of the rubble into pails because we've got to pail it out of here and, and get rid of it. So uh, uh, basically I'm just going to work my way through here and we're probably going to speed up the majority of it because obviously you don't need to see all the, see me just sweating my butt off working here. So, so you'll, you, well, you'll uh, see the first little bit here and then we'll probably likely speed it up. So get on my safety gear and go ahead. I've just got the gloves on just because uh, pulling out the pieces and that's kind of hard on the hands so this particular jackhammer just has a slide switch some of them have a trigger but this one's just a slide and uh, I should actually I should just speak about the bits too so the bits here come in and out by sliding this there's usually a collar on here and you'll have either a chisel bit or one that'll come to a point usually and usually the chisel's gonna give you the most bang for your buck. Okay, here we go. So you can see that uh, we've just about got all the concrete broke out now. Uh, this was about probably a little bit over an hour's worth of work to get it broke out. We probably got another 20 minutes here by the time we have the, the bigger rubble cleaned up and hauled out. We've been just using some uh, old five gallon buckets, filling them about half or three quarters full or whatever you can easily carry. You don't want to hurt yourself. Uh, we've got to carry it upstairs and outside. So we're going, you know, not right full. And you can tell I'm out of breath. <laughs> so we're just going to get this rubble out of here and then we can start digging down and uh, we're going to basically save most of this fill onto a tarp and reuse it, a lot of it around the, uh, around the new pit and stuff itself. Um, one thing that uh, it's probably worth mentioning is before you start a project like this, there's a few things you should consider about uh, in the area that you're going to uh, cut the concrete or start digging. One thing is if you have in-floor heat, like that's hydronic heating system inside your concrete, obviously you cannot do this job. You're going to end up cutting a pipe for sure, so don't, don't even consider it. Um, another thing to think about is where all your plumbing is coming and going from in the basement, because it will be uh, below here and sometimes it can be quite shallow just below the floor, so that's your uh, any kind of drains from the, uh, say, the bathroom uh, plumbing. Uh, your main sewer going out, although it should be pretty deep, you shouldn't, shouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, and uh, the main thing would be your main water line coming in. So uh, if you kind of know where your water meter is in the house and, you know, basically where it comes in from outside, then usually it's straight away from there. So make sure you're nowhere near that area because that, that one uh, can 
<laughs> flood your house pretty quickly before you get the city there to shut it off. So, so you think about all those things before you start this kind of project. But if you, if you know you're out of the way of any of that stuff and you're good to go, then uh, you know, break up your concrete and start digging. Okay, so uh, now we've got all the con main concrete out of the way. We can dig this hole down. Remember, we're, we gotta dig a big enough hole to sink this barrel into. So uh, it's gonna be a fair bit of digging. Uh, we're gonna need some of that, what we get out of here, some of the best stuff, which would be the gravels and stuff that are on top to fill back in around it. So I'm saving that onto this tarp to reuse it. And uh, if we get down to some clay or whatever, I'm gonna try not to reuse most of that. So it'll get in the buckets and hauled out again. So pretty basic. We're just, uh, just gonna be shoveling here for a while to get rid of this stuff here. So we have a hole to put that pit in. Pretty basic, straightforward, just keep digging. So they got a nice amount of gravel in there. It's good. Okay, so I got all the digging done. Um, you can see this massive crater that I've created here. And you can see there's already some uh, groundwater just seeping back into it. Uh, that hole has been dug for about half an hour or so. Uh, you can also see that I've got this extension for the weeping tile in, in our scenario. And it's just simply slit, both, both the weeping tile coming into the house and this extension are just slit and the two are just slit over each other. Uh, preferably this one slit over top of the other one to help keep directing the water this way. This trench was created here with just ever so slight, a little bit, of, little bit lower at this end than it is here so the water will naturally flow to this, to the bucket. So uh, for the most part, all the digging I just did with a shovel. You can see I have quite a mass of, of uh, backfill here, some clay and some gravel. Uh, most, most part did with the shovel. I did bring this uh, post hole digger here. Uh, in the end, I didn't need it. I had enough room to work, so I didn't worry about that. So we've got that all in. I've got my uh, side of my bucket cut open and that's just determined by the elevation of the uh, pipe. So I've got that cut. That isn't a tight fit. The pipe easily slides through there with room to spare. So, um, so basically it's just a matter of putting your bucket down in the hole, redirecting your, your pipe into it like that. Uh, now, when I was digging the hole, I just used a straight edge. I wasn't really going for level. I'm just using this as a straight edge you know, going from floor to floor, from concrete to concrete and getting the bucket. I don't want it standing up. So like above the floor, if anything, I want it down just a bit and I'm probably oh, a quarter inch lower than the concrete here. So it's just a matter of getting the bucket sitting in there so that the straight edge isn't riding up on it. Sometimes just stepping down in here, I'll just settle it down into that hole a little bit. Okay, so there's no real science to that. Just get it down below the surface of the floor. And uh, once you've got your pipe all in there, just be sure it's laying down nicely. You don't have a big hump in the middle or anything. Uh, we'll just make sure we put some weight on this when we start our backfill to keep that center down. It's sticking into the, into the pit itself, you know, an inch and a half or whatever. And uh, we're pretty much pretty much ready to just backfill that. So I'm going to put a little bit of clay. Our, our extension of our weeping tile doesn't have any grooves in it. It's a solid pipe. So uh, we can put clay right on it. We don't have to worry that the groundwater is going to weep dirt into that. So, so we'll put some clay here. We'll try to get some sand in, some gravel back in around the, the little bit of space that's between the, this liner and, and the hole we dug. And uh, you know, a little bit of clay, a little bit of gravel, get it up to grade where we want our concrete and then we're ready to go. Okay, so like I said before, we're gonna backfill over the pipe, mostly with uh, clay. We're gonna use some sand around that little gap around the bucket, around the uh, liner. I did take a big pail of clay, just a five gallon pail and set it down in that liner just to hold it in place so it isn't moving around while we're doing any backfilling. So 
So we'll just get some of this in here. That's right, I wanted to stand on there too. Once you have some weight on there, it basically holds that down. Okay, I just want to get some gravel around there, around that pit. Okay, so that just kind of gets our pit sitting stable so it's not uh, shifting around in that hole on us. Now we'll use a little bit of this clay to take up some of the bulk. So once I've got the clay kind of roughly in there, I just want to pack it down, get it settled down. Clay isn't the best backfill material. But uh, here we're not structurally really holding anything. So I'm just using this wood to basically just pack that down in there. Okay, so we finished our backfilling. We got the uh, gravel in there. We tamped it down with the board and then I walked around in there just to pack it down that much more. Uh, swept the, the area around us here just to get rid of any stones that are up on the concrete. Uh, more than anything, just keep from kneel kneeling on them and that sort of thing. Um, I also ran the broom around just on the inside edge here. You know, there's some little lips and stuff because this isn't gonna be perfect and just swept off any sand or gravel that was up on there too so we get a little bit of bond there. Um, I'm just mixing the bagged for kind of pre-mix concrete for this little job and uh, probably only mix about a third of a bag at a time because I'm just mixing it by hand in this pail but I'm basically just going to mix it, dump it in there, we'll prod it in nice with the trowel and uh, you know then work our way around but we'll we'll get ourselves worked fair ways from that side there and before we start troweling or doing too much messing around. So just mix it as your uh, as the instructions tell you to for the manufacturer. It's not the easiest to mix it just in a pail, but for this little bit that we're doing. I'm just using a little paddle to try to make sure I'm mixing right down to the bottom. <clears throat> it's not quick, real quick setting or anything. It's sets relatively quick but it's not like I've got to be in a huge panic here. I'm just trying to get mixed right down to the bottom. I probably put a little more than I should have in here to start with. batch is a little runny because I added a little more water to it than I really wanted to but I don't know if I mentioned uh, we're basically trying to leave about three inches of concrete around there uh, we didn't do any uh, rebar dowels or anything but you could dowel in rebar if you wanted to uh, a lot of this floor is in this section here is barely two inches so uh, if I try to re dowel anything in there it's probably just going to break off anyway so We're just pouring it around there. It'll kind of run where it needs to run. And like I said, we'll uh, do some troweling here after a bit.
on the way to setting up a little bit over here. So I'm just kind of basically vibrating it down into there. to deal with a little little area like this. Just go around and basically slope it to whatever your pit's at. Okay, so you just kind of, in my case, like I said before, my pit's about a quarter inch low. So it just creates a little bit of a gradual slope back to it. I'm just kind of, oh, my weeping tile's already uh, letting some water in there, so. kind of working it a little bit it kind of gets the air out of it that might be trapped in there and I'm just using a magnesium float for this part probably was a little bit runnier than it really needed to be finish off there. Oops. Okay, so a little bit more just to finish this area off here. see my uh, pit is just a little bit offset that way from the center of the hole so got a little bit more width over here on the concrete you'll get once this dries you'll actually get a little bit of shrinkage and you'll probably get a bit of a crack around the perimeter from the old pad. If it's in a, if it's in a floor where you want to, uh, you know, maybe you're putting some vinyl or something like that, once this cures, then you might want to go over it with some self-leveling cement just to kind of smooth it out anywhere where it shrunk. So with the mag, we're not trying to get it perfect, but trying to get it pretty close and uh, we'll use a steel trowel on it once it sets up a little bit more. It's a little bit of time yet. So I'll just keep filling in this trench uh, with the concrete and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so once the uh, concrete has set up a little bit further, uh, we're gonna use a steel trowel on it. We used the magnesium float before and that's basically just to get it pretty much into place. It helps pull up some of the fines to the top. And then the steel trowel, once, uh, once your bleed waters have kind of come off the concrete, you know, the, the moisture that bleeds through, then you can, should be ready to trowel it. And this will just give it a little smoother finish. Close in any, uh, this is actually still a little bit wet. So we're just kind of flattening it out with this and you can see how it makes a smoother finish than what we've got over there that we did with the magnesium trowel. A little hard on a small area like this when we've poured it in different batches. One's drier, one's wetter than the other. So it's all setting up just a little bit differently, but I'm just going to go around this main pit area. I know down there it's not going to be ready for the steel uh, because it was uh, poured later, but I'll just go around here. Oop.
a little bit tricky in such a small little area here, but. And uh, also before I did this, I went around the edges and just kind of cleaned up any of this little bit of paste that's around the edge. Sometimes there's a rock in there, so I just clean it up with the edge of this up before I get to there. Okay, that's about as far as I can go over there. So we just kind of work that edge in as good as we can. It's not the easiest thing to do when you're coming up against a cut. So that pretty much uh, really is the wrap for that this video. Uh, we will be doing a uh, separate video on actually installing the sump pump, so you'll want to check that out as well. Uh, we're, it's actually going to be a 120 volt with a 12 volt backup. So look for that. Um, this is all basically complete. The concrete just has to set up though and, and that before we can do the pump. So, so hopefully, hopefully this worked out all right and gave you enough information to maybe install your own sump pit and uh, you kind of know what tools you're going to need and what supplies you're going to need as well. So if there's any other questions you have about this, just go to our forum on the website, check us out there, and uh, post up any questions you have. You can uh, follow along with us on Twitter and Facebook, and also uh, you might want to check us out on our uh, Patreon as well. So uh, good luck with your project, and uh, we'll see you next time.